Hello everyone, and welcome back to my channel. I am your host, Saucy McBoodlefist, and today we are playing the letter. And for the first time, I'm just not going to do a recap. In the last one, we talked to some people, we did some things, you know, if, if you don't know what's going on by now, then, well, quite frankly, neither do I, because sometimes, you know, stuff happens in this game, and I'm just like, what the hell are they talking about, you know what I mean? But anyway, let's get started with today's episode. The drive to BRC is a quiet affair, more so the long, the hour-long wait for nightfall. Even with the radio blasting lively tunes, the place is rife with tense energy, only a matter of minutes now. But the ticking seconds don't take away from the edge, and for the fifth time I reach out and fiddle with the radio, adjusting and turning the knobs with no real purpose. It's. It's a nervous quirk I've developed and never bothered to correct during stakeouts, something to keep my mind occupied during long nights. What I would give to hear Zach's, Rebecca's, or Isabella's voice right now. Scope BRC out, see if the real estate company has any more information that may be of help. That's the plan. Cooper and Isabella both worked on it before. I should have at least heard her out, given her the chance. She was so worried about everyone, that something might happen to us. Zack, she was warning me. She said we might be in danger. Remember Rose Cooper, her co-worker, on the news? You've heard it, right? She was saying something about her and the letter she got from that mansion. Whoa, whoa, wait, wait there, Rebecca. That's... That's a huge jump in logic right there. And a little bit too much to take in at once, frankly. I know that. If nothing happened, I wouldn't have given it much thought. But as it is, what if she was right all along? What if that letter she found really has something to do with this? The same thing was written in her room with her own blood and... And nothing. I expected to hear a better argument from you, Rebecca. And before you ask, the stupid letter's with forensics now, along with the other evidence. Don't waste your time looking for it. The whole case is a train wreck as it is. Sure, I could also check the stations for full reports. That's the easy, semi-legal way. But I don't want to bump into Chief right now. The guys at the precinct will definitely throw me out of, on his orders as soon as they see me. Not that my plan right now is any better, I'm just breaking into a different place, more or less. Honestly, it's a toss-up between breaking into the office or into the Wright's mansion. As it stands, I'll have an easier time getting in here first. After all, why would someone want to break into a realty company? Been here many times before anyway, for a casual visit when I wanted to bug Scaredy Cat. Over the years, I have seen more or less grown familiar with this security setup and how badly staffed they are. Plus, it's an old building. If the bankruptcy rumor, if the bankruptcy rumors are true, it just means their access protocols might be outdated. It gives me enough confidence as I exit my car and march towards the building. There are no side entrances, unfortunately. I'm going to have to do this the hard way. All things considered, though, it feels like this might go smoothly. And where do you think you're going, young man? Hey there, sir. A nice night we're having, eh? Hello yourself. It's late. Most, uh, most offices in this building have already closed up shop for the weekend. The bloke seems friendly enough, though one can't really tell from his voice alone. He might be the wary sort, for all I know. Keeping an unconcerned face and an aloof air won't hurt until I figured out how to wiggle myself out of this situation. Just come back on Monday if you have important business. He's probably been working here for a few months already, maybe around four to six months, max. Otherwise, he would have recognized me at first glance. I haven't shown my face here since I've been assigned to the firm case a year ago. In the first place, none of their security officers ever lasted a year in service. The longest was around 
seven and a half. I'll give the guy a round that before he gets fired or finds a better paying job for the moment, his too friendly attitude is almost a gift. Really? Damn. Boss man won't be too happy to hear that. Boss man? Sorry, it, it's my boss, Mr. John. He asked me to get a few things from his table. Important work stuff, you know. John? From Briar Realty? The one and only. But uh, this sucks. I didn't realize the office closes early on weekends. Shouldn't have stayed for another movie. Damn. I'm gonna get an earful later. New hire, you see? Good thing Isabella has been quite open with stories from her office, no matter how mundane they all are. Granted, she really ta rarely talks about her boss, but what I've gleaned from it is enough to fabricate a decent, believable story. Your new hires are always so dumb and clueless, I swear. You guys come and go a lot these days, but I suppose that's because they pay you a lot less in commission than the older agents, huh? You can say that again, but it's nothing hard work can't fix. Sure, you can do that, if this branch stays afloat. What do you mean? Uh, you know, stuff in the news. You mean what happened with Rose Cooper? Patience is the key. I can't rush this one or he'll get suspicious, or I might make a mistake. Besides, if I'm going to be stuck here with him for a while, I might as well try to gather as much intel as I can. He may just be a guard, someone with no real authority, but most of the time, People like him are the ones who know more than they let on. Yeah, but even before that, we've got a couple of good blokes we never saw again. There was this one kid too, uh, Santillian? Sanchez? Santos, Isabella. Really? Those guys could have just resigned for all you know. You know, I only catch tidbits of stuff from over here. Oh, seriously, I heard the branch is getting flushed soon, but that's no excuse for anarchy. You're the third newbie he sent running errands this week. I can't keep letting you all in after office hours. I'll get in trouble too, you know? Come on, just a few minutes. There's a long pause from his end, and if he's contemplating his op as if he's contemplating his options, a little push is all he needs before he gives in. You know how fickle the boss's moods can be. Well, yeah, but... Please, I really need to get those files to him tonight. Thanks. I owe you one. Using the side door presents a different problem, however. It needs an access card, one I don't have. I could always pry it open and use a gecko, but right under the guard's watch. Ah, uh, there's just this one problem. What is it again? I forgot my access card. I make a show of facing the security cameras, pulling my empty pockets out, and presenting him with the sorriest look I can muster. Ah, bloody hell, kids these days. Is there any way for you to... Boy, you're lucky I'm nice. I'll go and unlock the side entrance for you then. You can use my card, it's on the front desk. You'll need to beep in when you report for proper work on Monday, though. And don't forget to turn off the lights before you leave, Kate. He cuts off the connection before I can thank him. Soon the latch clicks and the slide door swings open. The guard, a stout man, wearing a uniform still lo too loose for him, waves me over from the gap before he disappears behind his station again. Just my luck. Here, I thought I'd have to use unconventional methods. Sure, I might be getting the guy in trouble. I kind of feel sorry for that, but it's not like he's keeping the job for long if he's always letting people in like that. If BRC doesn't have long either, He'll be out of it. He'll be job hunting sooner or later anyway. He's lucky I'm not here to hurt anyone. If I were some, someone would, if I were someone with ill intentions, he might not be smiling at the end of the day. Of course, as I step into the building and grab his access card, I try to push off all concerns as far down as I can. I need to focus. Work is work. Although, if this is a sign of what's to come, then maybe things are indeed looking up. It's a quiet ride up to the seventh floor, where BRC Luxborn's main office is. 
Seb, according to his access card, has been kind enough to switch the elevator's power on just as I'm about to head to the fire exit stairs. Which is a welcome relief. I'm an active guy, but stairs? I don't want to tire out too quickly in case things get ugly. There probably won't be any trouble with the building this quiet, but you never know. I swear the whole place definitely feels eerie at this point, at this time of night. But until I've confirmed anything, those are just stories. Worse things can happen. No need to scare myself. Staying calm means fewer mistakes. Though I sure am fucking gutsy, especially with what I'm doing. I'm breaking a lot of laws here. Best thing I can do is come out of this. The best thing that can come out of this is that Isabella was right all along. Worst case scenario? I find evidence that would implicate BRC or Luke Wright in a crime, and my meddling, if I'm not careful enough, makes it inadmissible in court. Though, I'll be honest, I prefer losing my job or facing right over some spirit or ghost or whatever it is. I could honestly work around the problems with, my, with the former, fighting off a phantom? How does, that, how does one even do that? Do guns even work with them? Yeah, not going to happen. But tonight, I'm here to fix things. If I do it without leaving a trail, all the better. <clears throat> good thing that's what I'm good at. The immediate area beyond the elevator door sees the agent's stations. There's a lot more to the floor, of course, but the first order of business as soon as I'm in, locate the records room, then security. Passing the sea of cubicles, I can't help but take in everything in their office, a force of habit for the most part. As far as I know, BRC Luxborn used to own this whole building. Offices in several floors once upon a time, when real estate is still a lucrative business for a company in the side of the country. Then, competition showed up and suddenly, everything's not so good anymore. It, it only got worse as the years went by, so according to the rumors. Now, the branch is just this floor, despite what the huge sign in the building's facade says. And frankly, it's not too hard to believe when one looks at the state of the room right now. A number of desks have been cleared out. Per personal mementos are scarce as if employees have gone on an exodus. That'll be the downsizing. Probably. Searching for what I need would be a whole lot easier if Isabella were here. Maybe she'd even tell me more about the sudden layoffs. She had always been... Focus, Frey. There's no point in whining or dwelling any longer on it. That's why I'm here in the first place. Without her, I'll just have to do this the old-fashioned way. I'm a detective, aren't I? Besides, the longer I take here, the riskier the situation becomes. Brushing it all off, I immediately get to work. On the far wall of the main workspace, plaques label most of the doors for easy identification. The staff lounge and the branch manager's office are places I'm familiar with and they're easily the most accessible of the private rooms. To the right of the manager's office is the meeting room and human resources. To its far left, the records, followed by security further back. Easy as pie, what will be tricky is getting inside both rooms. The security room first. The fact that no one has walked out when I entered means the room is either empty or the guards sound asleep. I'm banking more on the former. If they're cutting corners and firing agents, I have no doubt that they fired the, the guy stationed here if they have anyone watching the monitors in the first place. It's a rather common thing for establishments. Just leave, this, leave security recording indefinitely and only check the footage if something actually happens. Just to check, I press my ears against the door, listen for a sign of anyone occupying the room. After a long minute of nothing, I move back towards the records door and give it give its knob a few rattles time to get to work standard lock and key should be easy enough to pick we have lock pick, pick sets but 
those are only to be used if necessary and with a search warrant. Even then, it's a skill set rarely needed. Subtlety isn't on a cop's priority if they have authority to search the premises. Bolt cutters and brute force are, are the favored methods. If those fail, we call a locksmith. Me, I prefer the good old hairpin trick and those options are, when those options aren't available. Besides, they're easy to hide and store for emergencies. Running my hand through my hair, I pull out a pair of bobby pins. Two of these I can handle just about to open any standard lock. One makes a lever and the other makes a handle. I won't call it a complex skill, but it certainly takes a lot of practice to successfully pick a lock. Good thing I practiced with them for a bit in my college years. I learned more when they're accessible and standard issue for a law enforcement officer. A wiggle here, a click there, and I managed to seize all the pins and the locking mechanism soon enough. With a slight turn of the knob, the records room is ripe for the pickin'. Easier said than done. Now, where should I start looking? The property files are probably my best bet, as, as well as the people who worked on it, including Isabella and Rose Cooper. The sign-in forms from the open house can help me track the clients. But it's a little too far-fetched to think those people have been affected. It would have been news now. Isabella, Isabella has, already been found, has already found the letter by the time the open house has started. Besides, out of all the visitors, it's only with the right couple who Isabella and Cooper has had a noticeable interaction with. One that led to the sale of the mansion. So for the next half of the hour, I work in complete silence, digging every, into every files compiled into the Ermengarde Mansions folder. The client files I leave alone like the sign forms. Better narrow this down as early as possible. My best bets are still the people who have worked closely with Cooper, Isabella, and BRC itself. After all, that's where the connection is. Not an easy task considering how thick the whole thing is. Just the correspondence and contracts for the restoration alone make up a stack of papers that's an inch thick. Third party surveyors, or third party service providers hired by four of the masonry, radiators, woodworking, plaster work, slate roofing, and a whole bunch of other things are well documented. Hell, every single contractor who worked on the project were listed individually, even if they were just there to do plumbing. It's a high profile and a high cost estate, all right. But with that scope comes the loopholes, means plenty of room to hide something in if there's something fishy going on. All I have to do is find a pattern, and it doesn't take long. Upon closer glance, despite the original owner shouldering the renovation costs, it'll be surprising if they manage to break even on the Ermengarde Mansion. What with the additional expenses for the open house, the commission for their agents, and other overhead fees? At one point, the negotiations to get it listed under BRC's name was almost broke down, too. Some disagreement about the listing price. The owners wanted to be rid of it as soon as possible while keeping the worth of a profitable level. BRC was insisting on a higher amount, double what the appraiser suggested. This plus the rumor that there is a bunk, that their branch is closing. BRC Luxborn really is in the red, and the sale of the mansion could have easily been a desperate move to keep the branch afloat. No wonder the final sale happened as fast as it did. Sheesh, this place is just unlucky going bankrupt while the rest of this crap is happening? But this isn't what I'm looking for. What I need is the who. The people aside from Isabella and Cooper involved in the business with the mansion and the how they are now. I can't do much with the, outsides, with the outside contractors. They won't be on file. The employee list, on the other hand. Because if Isabella was to be believed, if what she's seen and what happened to Rose Cooper is because of that letter. I need to know everyone who has possibly read it aside from the three of us, if they've been noticing strange things too. For all I know, these may have just been a terrible coincidence. 
although the thought of that starts to diminish as I dig into the, B into the BRC company's files. Turns out there were two more employees who handled the mansion directly, aside from Cooper and Isabella. Christian Sly, the realty specialist, and Mark Julius Jean Marie, the realist, the estate appraiser. This C guy, he was in custody just the other day. Folks at the precinct said that they went to his house after a noise complaint. They found him acting all crazy and had to take him in when he started getting violent. He kept screaming about a woman. It was driving the guards mad, but he didn't last too long. A few hours in, he just started bashing his own head against the wall, and well, it was a mess. It was messy to say the least. To say the least. Guys, guy is in a. Guy is in the hospital right now, and I heard they're looking into putting him into a psychiatric ward as soon as he recovers. Within the company, he's been marked AWOL. Jean-Marie, on the other hand, his employee files, his employee file notes, his dates of leaving, and even when his final payment had been given. Along with it, there's a letter to his family about the appraiser being found dead in his office. Communication is hush-hush, and there's a mention of compensation if they don't talk about it to the media. Inspector Abigail has often scolded me for not reading the reports on a regular basis, but I try to keep up to date as much as I can. When I do, I make sure I'm aware of the gist of what's going on in my city. This? This never reached the police's ears or the health and safety executive. Business going under and someone dies while working here? Of course they want to keep that quiet. It's bad publicity. This whole thing is just getting freakier by the minute. I continue flipping through the documents for a while more. It's a quarter of an hour later when I put down the papers with a sigh and begin placing the folders where they belong. Aside from those two, I found nothing else of note. I feel like I'm still missing a lot of things here, but it's about time I leave. I've taken too long. I make a short, I make short work of creating duplicates out of everything I've deemed important. The pages with the names, addresses, and contact numbers will do. I'll start with the ones who live within the city. Once I've finished, I tuck the duplicates under my arm and bring the originals back to their proper place. With that done, I lock the door behind me tugging it twice just to make sure. I have my work cut out for me. It's not like I can help, it's not like I can ask for backup from the force. Now, on to the next order of business. Removing the evidence of my little excursion in here. Can't have my face plastered on security footage, showing me breaking the law, as it were. I'm gonna have to wipe the data from Seb's access card entries too, so I won't incriminate the poor guy. Same with the records room. The security has also been using a standard lock and key. Good thing my trusted my trusted bobbies are always here for me. Without much difficulty, I find myself facing the security monitors. The room's odor hits me, a sharp, nauseating stench, as if someone has accidentally spilled a gallon of bleach in the room. When was the last time they opened this place? Ugh, this place smells awful. Jesus, it's worse than the forensics lab on a bad day. This is probably because of a badly botched effort to clean the place up. Even in the dark, I can spy dark stains on the walls. I really don't have the time to try and play it. Is this ketchup or soda right now? But I have a strange gut feeling who the mess might belong to. As expected, no security personnel mans the office of CCTV's controls, and the standalone DVR setup is open for anyone. Normally, I'd have a heap of things to say about the sloppy security setup, but right now, their negligence makes the whole task in a, of erasing evidence easier. No fuss, no muss. The next one should be the, ac the access card data. Hopefully getting into their computer won't be too much of a hassle. Everything up to now has been smooth sailing. There have been hiccups, I'll give it that, though it does not it does nothing to dampen the good mood I'm in. Once I shift my attention to the machine sitting next to the DVR setup, 
All of it swiftly evaporates. I am no computer buff, but I can definitely recognize one more than a decade old. Simply looking at it makes me feel younger. I have no other choice, however. Unless I pull the douche card and leave Seb to whatever trouble he's getting into. I don't have the heart for such a thing. After all, the help the old man has unknowingly lent me tonight. With a heavy sigh, I power it up and mentally prepare myself for a slow slug. Slow apparently remains an understatement here. It takes a whole three minutes for the thing to start up. The OS hasn't even started loading, and in my boredom, I started inspecting the live feeds from the cams. Only two words. One for the outs one for the view. Only two works. One for the view of the outside. Everything seems to be in order there. And the other, the main workspace, where it's a fleeting glimpse, a cursory glance, but the sight of it stops me. The image is a bit blurry, but standing there, right in the middle of the room, one in by one of the cubicles, I can make out the form of a What the hell is I don't get too far into that line of thought. No few seconds after my words have slipped out, without any sort of warning, while I'm still trying to make sense of what it is. A moment of paralysis hits me when she stops right in front of the camera, like a damn rookie. I go still in the face of danger. I definitely haven't been trained to handle the supernatural, and this is one, and this is one, isn't it? And, oh fuck. Her eyes bore into me, the malice in them piercing, even beyond the screen. It's enough to make me go numb. Only the mug crash into the floor when my hand accidentally takes a swipe at it, snaps me out of the trance. Without a second thought, I back away from the controls, from the room, ready to be done with this place. But before my foot even moves, she disappears. Son of a- Instinct instantly takes over and my hand quickly reaches for the gun at my side, only to meet empty air. A mistake that cost me a few precious seconds, all the paperwork I've brought with me threatens to scatter everywhere at the same time. Gathering everything and myself once more with no weapon to protect myself, my sense of self-preservation kicks in next and I lunge towards the door. I sprint across the office without daring to look back. As soon as I make it out of the office, I practically throw myself into the open elevator and slam the button for the ground floor. The ground floor. A sigh of relief escapes me when the elevator starts, to dis starts its descent. The clicking noise fades off into the distance. Shifting the stack of papers under my arm, arm, I lean back and wait in an attempt to compose myself. Breathe. In. Out. In a matter of seconds, the elevator stops and the door opens too. There's a moment's pause. Why take in my surroundings? Confusion understandably there, along with frustration. Are you kidding me? They should just replace this whole thing! I'm quite sure I pressed for the ground floor, though. But it's an old building. The elevator always did have problems when I visited in the past. Even Isabella becomes so angry whenever we try to get her to get to her floor, and she'll have to repeatedly, repeatedly smash the button for the elevator to even move. That was good enough for a laugh. I wasn't too worried then. Now? From the distance, beyond the light's reach, the noise echoes in the ear in my ears along with a rapid pounding in my chest. Anyone there? I can hear you moving from here. Show yourself. No response, only the soft sound of something scurrying around on the floor and the walls in slow, deliberate movements, faint though still audible enough in this hush, until it stops. A moment. And then? This time, I'm certain it isn't my imagination. Against my training, my whole body stiffens. Hands still mid-pressed on the button, eyes growing wide while waiting for any sort of movement 
from further back and ear strain for the source of the sound. Much as I hate to admit it, dread has seeped into every nerve in my body and the blasted elevator still won't work. This isn't my fucking training manual. Another series of shuffling against the ground, a laughter, and all of a sudden, she's just there. Like a twisted spider, she stares at me, a look of hunger in her eyes and venom in the twisted manner she smiles. A glee she has well earned when I'm a damn fly that has been dropped right on the spider's web. Damn it! Damn it! Without warning, she moves, mocking me with each unhurried crawl she takes knowing I'm at her mercy. Fucking hell! Why aren't you stupid? My life is in the hands of a crummy elevator, literally hanging between life and death. I, I'm not going to die here. Not in a damn elevator. We did it! As if a divine power has heard me swearing up a storm in my head, the doors close just as that thing looms near. Soon, the elevator, the blasted thing, is headed up. And this? This is the most I've been tired my whole life. Not during training, when my superior first asked me to drop a hundred. Not after a stakeout. But after smashing a fucking elevator button repeatedly. I slump to the ground, worn out, but I don't let myself feel relief again, and not until I'm out of here. Still, I find myself letting out a shaky laugh. Fuck, I should have taken the goddamn stairs. Twice I've seen it, thrice if you include the party, unless I'm tripping balls without realizing it. There's no doubt in my mind that this is actually happening. I don't want to believe it. But with the truth staring at me in the face, It'll be stupidity to deny the reality of the matter. Alright, we are going to end the episode off here. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Or don't. I don't give a shit. And I'll see you all in the next one. And, uh... Goodbye, everyone.